On a cold day in Pittsburgh, Panther fans are packing the Peterson Event Center as the undefeated Panthers, led by Julius Page, look to extend their unbeaten streak against the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, led by Herve Lamazana. ESPN Plus brings you Big East Basketball next. And another big game day at Pittsburgh, where today the Scarlet Knights meet the Panthers. Good afternoon, everyone. Don Quickie with Jim Spinarkel, and welcome to Pittsburgh, where the beat goes on and the streak goes on. 17-0 this season, 36 straight wins at home, both the longest-standing marks in college basketball. Well, one of the things about this team, Don, is they pride themselves at the defensive end of the floor, and obviously teams have had trouble getting to the 70-point mark, sometimes at the 60-point mark, so you really have to hit your shots early and often against them. Well, Rutgers is a team that can be very dangerous when the Scarlet Knights bring their A game. They can beat anybody. Just ask Connecticut, who barely got out the number one team. About 10 days ago, they took Connecticut to the wire and also against the Friars of Providence, the ranked 25th team in the country. At the end of this basketball game, Quincy Doobie takes the ball down the floor to the free throw line, drops it back out to Lamazon, and he buries a long-term three shot there for four tenths of a second left. Obviously a big win for Rutgers, but another guy in the backcourt, Ricky Shields, is a guy you have to be careful with. We'll shoot the ball from long range and we'll step up and fire at any time. The hallmarks of Pittsburgh basketball are unselfishness and balance. They don't have one good player, they've got a lot of them, like Jerron Brown. And he's a guy that has helped them scoring in the Big East contest early on. He's leading them in scoring with 18 points a game, but against Notre Dame, Monday night passed the ball very well. Defensively, he was a catalyst, so watch him at both ends of the floor. Now, the last uh, 36 teams that have come to the Peterson Event Center have tried to beat Pitt, could not do it. We'll be back with the starting lineups and the opening tip-off in a moment. And we are just about ready to go as the Pitt Panthers are starting lineups now for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Lamazana leads the way up front. Baxani is the big working guy down low, blocking shots along with Lamazana, working for rebounds. A lot of firepower from the backcourt. Uh, Pittsburgh, interchangeable parts. Really, is very, very good players in all areas of the game. Leading scorer is the sophomore guard, Krauser. And Taft, the freshman center, is a guy you have to look at as a guy that can really be a difference maker, Gary Waters is now, as you see, a 58% winner since coming to uh, the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. And his counterpart is Jamie Dixon in his first season at Pitt, a 17-0 start. Here's a guy that was a nine-year assistant under Ben Howland and took over and has certainly acquitted himself admirably Jim he sure has and one of the things that he's done very well obviously is he hasn't come in and made a whole lot of changes as you take a look at the comparisons right there in terms of points that they're scoring Pitt 72 a little higher than Rutgers but points allowed that was the point there with Pitt 56 points per game defensively so Dixon has just continued to bring the defensive uh, presence to the floor as a coach for this team and here is a freshman guard Marcus Webb with the ball for Rutgers very composed player for a first-year player. Shields a good outside shooter. Rutgers will work the perimeter. Uh, Gary Waters told us he thinks the key to the game for Rutgers. They have to rebound. The Scarlet Knights have to bang the boards along with the Pittsburgh that sends five men to the boards. And now Lamazana, a guy that Jim can be about as good as he wants to be, puts down the jump hook and the Knights take the lead. Plenty of tools. As we touched on the open, we saw him shoot the ball from long range against Rutger, uh, Providence, but also at the post with Rutgers there. He has to get a little inside, a little outside. He's usually more effective, Lamazana, when he starts the game inside and gets some easier touches. Big guy, 6'10", his coach water says of Lamazana, Irve can be as good as Irve wants to be. Here's Duran Brown, very unselfish team as the shot clock now down to uh, five seconds. A jump hook is put down by the freshman Chris Taft out of Brooklyn, New York. Another guy with unlimited ability right there, but back-to-back -back jump hooks to start things off. Both teams in man-to-man -man defense and both teams at the offensive end pretty patient working the clock down. Defense never stops when you play Pittsburgh. 
Now Lamazana, obviously the first option today. Can't get his second shot to go, but good work down low, and the ball is taken by Marcus Webb. And just a little bit of a float from right to left on Lamazana's shot just then as he backed his way in. Oh, he's active though, isn't he? He really is, uh, Jim, and he's the guy that obviously they want to... First option in every offensive possession for Rutgers has been Lamazana, who averages four and a half points a game, 14 and a half points a game. And here's his drive, and watch to see if Brown gets in there. A couple of guys reaching and stripping for the basketball. Good defensive effort once again. One of the things about Pitt early on, they will close on you, put the ball on the floor. There's going to be an extra body kind of getting in your way, filling up the gaps, going towards the basket. And Rutgers uh, turns the ball over now, and here comes Krauser for Pitt. Good uh, defense jumping into the passing lane is Sean Axani and tips it out of bounds, back in bounds to the Panthers. Yeah, Axani's one of these guys who just really plays hard at the defensive end at a double-double, 11 points, 11 rebounds against Mammoth earlier in the week. Javon Troutman kicks it out to Jerron Brown, left open. And the rebound, they're so good offensive rebounding. That's how they beat Notre Dame 74-71 on Monday night, did Pitt. Getting a second and third shots. Well, what you need to do is obviously first get a body on them, but don't forget to go after the basketball. Just blocking out is one thing, but you have to go after it. Down low they go. Nice job defensively here by Rutgers, though. About 10 seconds on the shot clock right now. Pitt has not gotten a good look. Here is Taft, the freshman at All-Americaners last year. Boy, that's a Vierian in Brooklyn. Boy, that ever come up flat. That had no spin on it whatsoever. They have gotten hit on the arm, though, to cause that. Launch a knuckleball. They're still at 2-2 with 17.05 to play in the first half. I don't think we're going to see a 100-point score today, Don, with these two teams. Uh, is it going to be a relatively low-scoring game, I would guess, if the uh, first couple of possessions are any indication? Long ball, long ball. As you know, Jim, uh, Pitt allows just uh, 56 points a game. That's right. uh, number eight in the country in scoring defense. So you got to make your possessions count and your shots count against Pitt. Zani with a nice rebound there, a nice drive right here. Good work putting his left shoulder into the gut of the defense. Troutman at that time, not getting great position, but good work by Exani to really position himself pretty well for Gary Waters' squad. The officials today, Mike Kitts, Curtis Shaw, Patrick Driscoll. As Siobhan Troutman gets a first personal foul. And Exani goes to the free throw line. Not his uh, strong suit. He is a 52% free, free throw shooter this year. Exani, a fifth year senior out of Red Bank, New Jersey, Red Bank High School, a guy who never stops competing. The captain of the team, a Dean's List student. Look at his numbers there. Seven rebounds a game, second best on the team. He's had four games this year where he's gone for 10 or more rebounds. So. Generally doesn't fill up the stat sheet a whole lot in terms of points, but really gets the rebounds, some steals, and does a whole lot of work defensively at that end of the floor. Here is Krauser working hard against Shields, a very good defender. Krauser the leading scorer for the Panthers. Down low, but Siobhan Robin comes off the baseline and scores. Well, good job because what they did there, they baited two Rutgers players to stay with the basketball up top. Lack of communication there allows it an easy one down the other end. Here's a steal. Drop into the basket. Lays it up and down. And Pitt, with the constant pressure, turns Rutgers over. That has been the problem Rutgers has had against Pittsburgh in the past. Turning the ball over against Pittsburgh pressure. Uh, defensively, a nice play by Troutman just then. But also when he caught the basketball, he recognized that he had a little bit of a shoulder advantage on the race with Webb going to the basket. Good delivery on the way. Off the baseline, Shields breaks to the basket. Exani will get on the stat sheet there with a beautiful pass. Little give and go from the high side. Nice delivery by both Exani and Shields. Good backdoor cut by Shields just then. Ricky Shields, a junior who was uh, Rutgers' most prolific three-point shooter. He gets that one off the baseline. And it is a 6-5 game pit. It's a foul now is called on Adrian Hill of Rutgers. Looking at uh, the Pitt Panthers, they have won nine straight games in Big East play dating back to last season. 16 straight Big East games at home. Welcome back to the University of Pittsburgh, Don Pricky with Jim Spinarco. Troutman off to a good start, Jim. Sure is at both ends of the floor, Don. And one of the things with their Pittsburgh's offense, very, very patient here. You, you'll see Rutgers double team up high, but nobody comes after Troutman to pick him up. Lamanzano's touch late and now defensively. 
He picks the basketball up, but notice his shoulder's ahead of Webb right there. As soon as you get within striking distance of the basket, if your shoulder is ahead of the defender, that's a green light for you to continue going to the basket. Nice job at both ends of the floor by Troutman. Troutman is a junior from Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And uh, he is a very durable player. He gives it to you at both ends, offensively and defensively. Now, the jump hook by Taft, his second of the game, and it is an 8-5 advantage for Pittsburgh. Well, if you thought Taft could only jump hook from the left side of the floor, he can now go to the right side of the floor, too, and very effective in body positioning, also before he even catches the basketball. Well, you're talking about his upside. There's no telling how good uh, Taft can be. He's a... 6'10", and he could get bigger, they think. A freshman. Once again, Brown that time defensively. Exani with the foul down low after the pass. And here's a little jump hook. Notice he gets himself positioned body-wise prior to setting the shot up. Catches the basketball and then starts into his motion using his body very well against Lamanzano, who's a very, very good shot blocker in the Big East. Julius Page, the senior guard. They work the ball, constantly looking for the cutters, and it's Page who pulls up in the lane and knocks it down with the left hand. It's always good to see a guard go through the lane, read the defense, and then make a judgment about eight feet away just then. You don't see it that often, the pull-up jump shot. Nice little tricky move there by Page. Page, a senior from Buffalo, is a 14-point-a-game scorer, and he's the top defender for the Pitt Panthers. And now working hard to the basket is Webb, and good work underneath, just banging his way free. And getting it up and down is Adrian Hill, the sophomore. Taft was a factor defensively just then. He got his finger on that basketball, but Hill hanging around. As you see Pitt's numbers, 5 of 7. Rutgers still hanging in there, only down 3. Pittsburgh uh, shooting very well, as usual. They uh, shoot over 50% as a team, one of the leaders in the country. Here's the steal. Browser shut off, gets it out to Page. Short on the three ball, and now it comes back the other way with the freshman, Marcus Webb. Good decision by Webb just then. They were two against three pit defenders. Good decision by the youngster to take it out, relax a little bit, and make sure they get a good set and a good shot. Hill dishes off to Axani, and good ball movement down low by the Scarlet Knights as they saw that he was going to be rejected, and dishes it off, and the Scarlet Knights are back to within one. Decision's pretty good by both teams in the interior. I thought you're right, Dan. I thought that was going to get put back in his face. And now, the base give and go, pick and roll, and Krauser's free for the inside shot and a three-point lead for the Panthers. They really like to attack, don't they? They're really looking first thought is to go to the basket as often as they possibly can. They are, the Panthers, a very aggressive team at both ends of the floor, attacking on defense, attacking on offense. Lamazana getting doubled up. Three ball is picked up by Webb. Long-range ball, Karam's up. The shot by Shields is no good. A collision on the rebound and a foul on Rutgers. Now Shields can knock that shot back. I mean, he shoots the ball at 35% clip for Gary Waters, so he knows that he can make those shots. A little long that trip, but then as he put the ball up, he drifted away from the basket and then decided to come back onto the floor and try to get the offensive rebound. He was a touch too late. And the foul was on Ricky Shields, his first. So the ball will come in bounds to Pitt. Browser bringing it in. Browser uh, said of Jamie Dixon, he said, uh, we know him, he knows us, and he knows he's going to get everything we have every game. Absolutely. The MVP of the uh, Pitt Holiday Tournament this year. So obviously a guy who can step up at big times when they need him. Its defense are already accounting for four steals so far in this game for the Panthers. They average only five a game. Pull-up shot. Brown can't get it to go. Corey Morris in the game. A major collision down low with Byron Jones. Two big guys. I tell you, this uh, pit team, Jim, has enormous size. They stand out here when they're warming up. It looks like an NBA team. Yeah, they really do. And the thing is, they're not afraid to put them on the floor. And here they go to work off the other side. Morris just hanging around and out battling. Page, the senior sharpshooter with a beautifully arced three-point try. That's a good to give him two, actually. It's a 14-9 lead. Good move here by Rutgers to call timeout. Not that they're in bad shape, 14-9 score, but just want to make sure that you're getting good shots down the other end of the floor and obviously put a better effort at the defensive glass. Gary Waters uh, said there's no surprises when you play Pitt. They do the same things every time, but uh, they do them so well as yeah, we look at the home winning streak. 
Uh, you look at those numbers, 36, Duke right behind with Wake Forest, Texas, Wisconsin. Who was the last to beat Duke? North Carolina, maybe, a couple of years ago? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Tough place to play down there, Cameron Indoor Stadium. You spent four <laughs> good years there. Yeah, we had a little fun. It's a great home court advantage. The students, similar to this place right here, where the students are right behind us, around the floor. Yeah, you can do a great team just to the guys that transfer out of Duke because they can't play. There's so <laughs> many good players there. I've never seen it. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's a great school and a, a great program. And Krzyzewski, you talk about the beat going on every year. More and more great players go to Duke. That's the way we like it, Don. <laughs> <laughs> Here now is the uh, Scarlet Knights trying to work something down low, and they, they really have that help defense. They cordon things off. They move by joints, and a little arm pops up at the same time. Offensive foul is going to go the other way. Pitt will not give you that paint. They deny the lane. But Gary Waters sees his team fall behind by five. It has beaten Rutgers five straight. Welcome back to the uh, Pittsburgh Peterson Events Center. Balance scoring for the Panthers. Troutman, Page, and Taft all with four points each. And Page with a nice jumper from the right side of the floor. Really a good understanding of when his shot selection should be taken. Good guy because he's always reading the floor properly. So Pitt with a five-point lead in pretty good shape. And we well, look at the numbers already. Four steals for them in a team that only averages five per season. So Rutgers has to be much more careful with the basketball. That's the only thing Pitt is last in. Steals per game, and today they're building that number. Pittsburgh, you'll see a lot of touches of the ball. They really move the ball around. Great movement. You got the cutters working all the time. Everybody gives it up to the open man. A little step. Well, one of the things, too, about that steals statistic that's misleading, too, is that they play a little slower co uh, concept in terms of the, the uh, style of play, so there aren't as many possessions, even though they turn people over. You look at the numbers right there, five to one with Rutgers with the five, but there aren't as many possessions in it as there would be in a game going, say, 80 or 90 points per game. No question. Uh, the Panthers take it deep into the shot clock. Big reason they allow only 56 points a game on the average, and their team shooting percentage on offense for Pitt is 51% for the season. Seventh best in America. Now Rutgers uh, guns the ball too hard down low. Byron joins, passes out of bounds, and it comes inbounds. Torrey Morris brings it in. Carroll affected defensively just then, stepping in the middle of the lane, ready for Joins to come through the lane, and basically got in his way, made him think a little bit, distracted him a bit, threw it out of bounds. Gary Waters really wanted to see his team rebound, Jimmy said. That's uh, going to be the key of staying with these guys. They get too many second and third shots. We've got to get them. Well, especially with the thought, Don, that you just mentioned, where they take the air out of the ball a little bit, they wear the shot clock down. So now they were coming on 10 seconds on the shot clock. They take a shot, you miss it. You can't give them another rebound. There's a guy that probably shouldn't be taking outside shots, and look at that stroke, Mark McCarroll. Rutgers has to find a nice shot right here. Rutgers on a two-game win streak. Providence and Monmouth after losing three straight, including the one-point loss to number one Connecticut. And when you talk about talent on teams, though, I don't know if any team in America in recent years is as strong one through 12 on the roster as Connecticut. Oh, they are loaded. I've had the pleasure of watching them a couple of times. I worked the Rutgers-Connecticut game that we referenced on the opener. I mean, they do. They go deep, and one of the things, they go up and down very, very quickly. We'll take a little time here to see what's up with the, with the clock, reset the clocks. And one of the reasons uh, teams like Connecticut are so good is uh, when you're that deep, one through 12, Jim, I mean, you've got great players to practice against. A lot of teams, their first five, are playing against this very inferior second-line players. Then they get into game action. They're going against much better competition. Rutgers' backup players would start most places. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's. Uh, I'm sure some of those practices that they have at UConn are pretty, a lot of fun to watch. We'll straighten out this clock situation to get going and momentarily. And 14 left to play in the first half. Jamie Dixon, uh, gee, what a start, though. There's a lot of question. At first, they made a move towards Skip Prosser. They tried to get him to come as the head coach of the Panthers when Holland announced he was going to UCLA. Right. They settled on his assistant, Jamie Dixon, and uh, not a bad move. 
<laughs> so far, so good. Their upcoming schedule is a pretty good test, though, right? They have UConn at UConn and also at Syracuse. So this game here, not over by a long shot, but those two coming up will really test the pass. Yeah, they've got two coming up on the road at UConn and at Syracuse. You will indeed find out how good you are. UConn, the number one in America, one loss early in the year. UConn with a tough one today. They'll play at North Carolina later. Byron Jones has a foul call on him. Inbounds to the Panthers. And that's number three on him. Jones will be sitting for a while. McCarroll hangs a jump shot. Gets the rebound. This is a typical pit basketball. Getting more than one chance at the offensive end. It's a terrific effort, though, by Hill just then. Adrian Hill going up. I thought that was going to be a clear dunk. <laughs> I think McCarroll thought the same thing. Not now. Here is Hill down low. He has uh, got the reputation as a relentless rebounder. And here's a foul as Shields is hit on the arm going to the basket. He'll shoot two for Rutgers. Good decision just then by Shields also to bring that ball to his left hand. He's a right-handed shooter. But he brings the ball up after he gets his shot. Here comes Hill. That gets blocked. And watch Shields come at it. Puts the left hand away with the basketball. Creating contact. Go to the line. Get his first one to go down. The foul was on McCarroll. Ricky Shields at the line is a very good free throw shooter, 79%. Gets them both. Scarlet Knights hanging right in there, down by three to Pitt with nine and a half to go in the first half. Shields came into this game with 33s for Rutgers this season, 133, seventh in RU history. McCarroll keeps working on that bank shot. Better job by Hill again. He's starting to really put some meat on the defense. Defensive end, Juby really rips one from long range. Good quick up by Rutgers to take advantage, get a shot off before Pitt could get set defensively. Quincy Duby, a freshman backline player for Rutgers who led New York City in scoring in the public league at Grady High School in Brooklyn. Arcing a three, tied up at 14, but Pitt comes right back and answers. A beautiful arc just then also. Browser going through the middle of the lane just then, a little floater to make things happen. Browser with a, a big assignment, Jim. Of course, he's the guy that stepped in to play point guard now that Brandon Knight has graduated. Right. Hard-nosed, solid competitor, though. Well, he thought about being a prize fighter one time early in his life. He was 2-0 uh, as an amateur, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. Here's a lead to McCarroll. And he gets it to the high percentage range. Laying it off glass. It's an 18-14 game as... The uh, Panthers score two quick buckets to open up a four-point lead. So Krause at 2-0 as an amateur fighter, 17-0 this year. He hasn't lost too yeah, much. Yeah, that's right. This, guy's, <laughs> this guy's a sure thing. Here he comes leading the break. Three on two, good lead release. down low. And slamming it down off the break is Jerron Brown as we see Pitt at its very best. That was can be sensational. Yeah, that was a very good pass by Krauser to release the basketball. Sometimes you want to keep going if you don't have the numbers and you don't have the angles. But Krauser gives it up just about half court. But why? Because he recognizes that Brown is ahead of the pack. As soon as somebody's ahead of the pack, give it the ball, give him the ball, and let them go do what they have to do well. And McCarroll doing his thing on the offensive glass on the break. So Pitt. All of a sudden, picking up a six-point differential just then as Rutgers had narrowed it and tied it at 14. Yeah, they went on that six-point run, that 6-0 run in the space of 50 seconds. As we see uh, Pittsburgh shooting over 50%. Rutgers with only 12 field goal tries. You get limited numbers. Rutgers has uh, eight turnovers so far. Jamie Dixon keeps the heat on. They'll keep pressuring. They were at the same hotel we were at, the uh, Pitt team right nearby to the campus. And these guys are all about business. They've been stressing all week in practice that don't look towards the Connecticut game at UConn. Rutgers will knock us off if we do. And Rutgers is a dangerous team, especially at the rack on the road. They've had some problems, though. That is this great team defense. They have to hurry their shots right now, Rutgers, and here comes Pitt. Running an up-tempo oh, game, Krauser goes end-to-end -end oh. and is rejected by Axani. <laughs> Half. Axani tips it around uh, against Notre Dame in a three-point pit win on Monday night. Pittsburgh had 18 offensive rebounds. It was the difference. Hit by six.
The Pitt Panthers undefeated, leading Rutgers at 20 to 14 with 7.27 to go in the first half. And it's time now for the Pontiac top performance of the week. And the guy who had it hits Jerron Brown for his uh, great play against Notre Dame. And it was the all-around play, rebounding the basketball, gets himself in traffic here and puts up a little floater with that left hand to hit. And also passing the basketball, making a nice gut pass here for Pace to finish it off. Great effort against Notre Dame. You take a look at those numbers, 19 points, 8 of 12 from the floor. A very solid player, Jerron Brown, a senior from Lexington, Kentucky. Hit uh, with a team that shoots only 62% free throws, but they average almost uh, 13 offensive rebounds a game. They'll tip out a lot of those missed free throws and maintain possession, sometimes hit a three off a missed free throw. Shields launching long. Here comes Krauser having a big day with four points, five assists, and two steals. Krauser couldn't get off his foot. Trying to sell the official that went off the opponent. Once again, 100% on that one that the official is not going to be uh, <laughs> sold on it. Nobody's won that yet. Yep. And I don't believe they're handing out whistles to the fans here, so <laughs> the Rutgers will maintain possession right here. Rutgers, a team that uh, also preaches man-to-man uh, -man defense, wearing down the opposition. Pressure D is the first two words out of Gary Waters' mouth when he talks about what he thinks winning basketball is built on. But it's so hard, Jim, to penetrate this uh, Pittsburgh defense inside. Yeah, if you notice, what they do real well is they collapse into the middle of the floor. A nice little drive there, though, to make something happen. Wiggin. Well, Wigan. So Joel Wigan hitting the driving shot to make it uh, 20 to 16, and he will go to the free throw line. The foul was on uh, Yuri Dimitris, his first. Wigan with a good, strong effort going through the middle of the lane. One of the things the Pitt Panthers do so well defensively is they continue to collapse the weak side of the floor. By that meaning that if the ball's on the left side of the floor, the right side is the weak side. So as somebody drives to the middle of the floor, the other side, the weak side, will collapse towards the middle, making it difficult to get those clear paths and layups. Well, that was uh, one of the few times that Rutgers have been able to penetrate and get that clear path inside. A very good play that gives him a three-point play and cuts the lead to three with 6.23 left to play. Rutgers at home is really a very different team. They're yeah. one of the bets. One of the great venues in college basketball is the Rutgers Athletic Center, the Rack. It's a very spirited place, and Rutgers is uh, tremendous in that building. Yeah, well, while Gary Waters has been there, Don, they've been 32-9 and nine at the Rack. And Obviously, this last few games have had some beauties over there. The Connecticut game where they just came up short, but beating Providence. So, I mean, they will they will test the, test the waters against you, if you will. No, no pun intended. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you have a situation here where they just have to find a way to keep this thing close for the first 20 minutes, get to the break, and regroup for halftime. Well, after a 14-all tie uh, in this game, Pittsburgh took a six-point lead. A long launch. Get in there. Watch Man, this. A lot. <laughs> that's a four-pointer. I like those. <laughs> Calvin Wooten. That's what they have the rim up there for. Trick <laughs> shot. <laughs> There's no rule that says you can't use the rim as, a, as often as you want. Now, when you hit twice like that, you should get four points. <laughs> Here is Brown dishing up. Whoa, he's so good at giving up the ball. And Taft is worked out, and uh, he took some steps. It's an interesting play there because Taft had himself positioned properly under the basket. Jamie Dixon looking for a call. Watch the quick interior pass, but the ball squeezes out of his hands right there. He loses it and smothers it against the bottom of the rim. Could not come down with an easy possession. And that three-pointer by Wooten gives us the third tie of the game. Now Rutgers down by six not that long ago, looking to take the lead. Wooten sat out seven games for Rutgers, but he's played well over the last five. Yeah, he's coming off uh, off-season knee surgery, a sophomore for De from Detroit, from McKenzie High School, when he led the Detroit Public League in scoring one year. And he shoots that free ball, coming in 8 for 19 from the floor from three, so 42%. So he can really fire it up if you don't go out and get him. That's one of the things about Rutgers, is that they will step further and further away to shoot their threes if they have to. The Rutgers has got guys that can shoot way outside the arc, like uh, Ricky Shields and Wooten. Krauser really goes after the basketball. Hey, great call. Right, I think he get a 
foot was on the inbounds line. Now all the people behind us are screaming that that's a bad call, Don, but I happened to lean forward and his foot was clearly sitting on the line. Pat Driscoll was right on top of it. And watch, left foot, right foot's right on the line. Look where Pat is, makes the call. But he's on the road <laughs> making that call. And it's, these fans here at home don't give you a break. This is a great building, a beautiful building. Open last year. Panthers 30-0 in this building, 36-0 in their last 36 home games. Oh, Although early in the season they didn't exactly play a murderer's row of their opposition. Well, that's the thing. You can look at their schedule. There's a couple of three or four games that are tough, tough games on the schedule coming in before the season. And Jamie Dixon has won them all, so you can't knock them. But this week is a telling week. Driving shot is rejected. And then uh, a foul is called on Joel Wigan after he missed the shot trying to get the ball. So Jamie Dixon sees his guys uh, go to the free throw line to shoot one in bonus. Gary Waters with an unhappy message to Wiggins. <laughs> Just trying to keep them focused. Gary Waters doing a good job so far. 2020, the key right now, I think, is as I mentioned, get to the half, be within three or four points, regroup, and then come out and try to keep it close for the next 15 minutes and try to steal one. Yeah, stay in the game. Try to get in the last uh, couple of minutes and see what will happen as Pittsburgh now breaks the tie. Taft at the free throw line. A 59% free throw shooter. Got averages uh, two and a half blocks a game. Chris Taft. Rutgers uh, looking for that offensive rebound, a defensive rebound off the missed free throws because there'll be many. That's one thing the Panthers come up short on. Free throw shooting 62% as a team. And 100% as a team on defense of the Panthers. They never let up. Taft rebounds at the defensive end. Here comes Krauser. Lead to Jerron Brown. That's well, Wiggins can play some defense. And Rutgers goes man to man most of the time, and they, they're not afraid to put chest to chest and go after you also. Krauser with a beautifully executed play, kicking it out, but. Uh, Rebound comes down to Hill, and Rutgers down by one with 3.56 to play in the half. And you notice that Pitt usually has pretty good balance defensively because offensively they really understand where they're supposed to be on the court for their offensive sets. Oh! Rutgers takes the lead on a pull-up jumper by Wooten. And nice decision by Wooten just then. Got his shoulders around the corner a little bit, gets himself into the paint, and I think he reacts to Coach Gary Waters over to saying that I'm ready to play. Hey, this Joel Wiggin, he's given Krauser all he can handle. Krauser cannot free up for an open look. And forcing him to take a little extra time off the clock, even though Pitt's comfortable with that. Johnny with a good hand, nice defensive effort. The hard-working captain gets it back to the Scarlet Knights. Well, look at the balance. The balance is all predicated off the Pitt offense, so you don't get many layups against them. That's why they shut you down. Uh, Jump shot might have been tipped. Axani fighting for the rebound. Routman gets it, tips it over to Krauser, lead pass down court, and Brown goes to the basket, lays it in. He was fouled and will go to the free throw line for the Panthers. Shields a little late getting there, and a nice little tuck in by Brown just then. Watch how Brown coming down the floor now. Watch what he does with the basketball. He kind of extends it to the baseline to get it away from the defender. Most guys will bring that up to bring it up over your head to shoot a layup. But what he did first there was to put the ball ahead of him create the contact, and then worry about the shot afterwards. Jerron Brown, a 52, a 50% 50 free throw shooter. He is actually a better field goal shooter. 52% than he is free throw shooter. Jamie Dixon putting all he's got into every minute as coach, and this is first year's head man. Back to Pittsburgh, Don Crookie with Jim Spinarco. It's time now for the Guinness Game Summary. Uh, you take a look at the numbers, pretty even with the rebounding. 44% shooting for Pitt, but I think, you know, you look at those turnovers. They're the ones that Rutgers really has to be careful because, you know, if on the road here, if they can maintain control of the basketball, they should be in good shape throughout the course of this basketball game. And, of course, uh, the Pitt Panther balance is evident again uh, just in scoring. There's Dick Groth, the former All-American guard for the Pitt uh, for actually for Duke, right? Pittsburgh and then a great Pitts Pirate uh, shortstop. 
You know, I was talking to Dick before the game, Don, he mentioned he was talking about Chris Taft. He just looked at him as he walked off the floor, and he looked at him and said, wait till you see this kid. He can flat out play. He's a youngster, but he can go get it. Well, they talk about Taft's great hands. Wonderful soft touch, a guy who gained All-American honors at Xavierian in Brooklyn last year. Dick Grote, a baseball Hall of Famer, and he was a first-team All-American in the back line for Duke back in the uh, yep. early 50s, I guess. Yeah, put up some big numbers down there. I did get my joke in with him when the ball came over to us during the warm-ups, and I had to pass it because Dick would not. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie was open. Here is Taft. Great decision to shoot the ball just then. If he did not shoot the basketball, he would have been called for three seconds if he passed that one out. But he does have the good hands and a nice soft touch from eight feet or so. He comes in uh, averaging just over 10 points a game, and he is a 60% field goal shooter as Taft. Rebound carries out, knocked over to Wooten, and this uh, sophomore guard settles his team down as the uh, Rutgers Scarlet Knights down by four with 146 to play. Marcus Webb, a freshman point guard, the first New Jersey recruit for Gary Waters. Out of Patterson Catholic, a school that's turned out some great college athletes, like the former Villanova All-American Tim Thomas. And here is a shot down low as a working low as Adrian Hill, big uh, sophomore from Canton, Ohio, and he cuts the lead to two. Good possession just then, and good decision also from the guards for Rutgers. Not hurrying, not getting rattled. They took the long shot, got their offensive rebound back to them, but then settled down and made sure they got a good effort out of it. Browser with, a <laughs> with the authority. Drops right. the hammer. Boy, he really did. Big time, emphatic drive to the basket for the dunk. And a beautiful look again by Krauser. Really look for one another under the basket very nicely, especially after they break people down off to the perimeter. Nine points for Taft. There's no question, Jim, that Krauser is a table setter. You're open. He's going to get it to you. Axani is rejected by Taft. Here comes Krauser. And another one down there. Lead to Brown. Oh. And a follow-up of his own miss. And all of a sudden, the Pitt Panthers go on a quick run and take a 30-24 to 24 lead. Rutgers will play for a final shot. Yeah, they have to sit on it right now. They're going to look for a three. Pitt does have a foul of two or three or four to give if they want to, if they get in trouble right here. Doubling up on the ball are the Pitt Panthers. Here is Shields. Dishes out. There is the three-point look, but no open shot. Rebound from down court. There's to Page, and that's not going to go. As at the half, it's going to be Pittsburgh 30 and Rutgers 24. As the balance scoring of Pittsburgh. Brown with five. Taft with the nine now. Bowser has four. Page has four. Welcome back to the Peterson Event Center, University of Pittsburgh, where the Panthers lead at the half, 30 to 24. Don Pricky with Jim Spinarco. The unrelenting Pittsburgh defense has made a huge difference here, Jim, forcing 10 Rutgers turnovers. Yeah, and, and Rutgers, Don, is not really, they're not really in bad shape right now, only down six, but one of the things is they haven't been able to get easy shots, and I think when you look at that, that's part of the problem for the Scarlet Knights. But really, they've had some success early on with Doobie shooting the ball from long range, and then Wooten will take the basketball and go to the middle of the floor. So when they were aggressive, they were okay in terms of scoring their points. Adrian Hill for the blocks. He gets the ball down low, works hard to get a shot off against Troutman here. So they had their moments, but Pitt is very, very good at getting the ball down low. To start things off, Taft had the ball on the right side, a little jump hook. He goes to the left side with another jump hook. So obviously Pitt looking to get a lot of guys involved. Page with a little left hand. And then they push the ball up on you. Brown goes after it and really starts to attack. So they're mixing it back and forth. Defensively, Taft with his hands on the ball with one of his three block shots. Here he is on the offensive glass. Nice little pull up. Gets the soft shot to go. So once again, Pitt doing a lot of good things. And here's Taft coming down the middle in terms of flushing one through. So really what you have there in terms of the way Pitt's playing, it's a low scoring game. If you double what Rutgers has put up, they're only going to get the 48 points. So they have their hands full to get back in this game. Well, one problem Rutgers has had, they knew they needed a big game from Irve Lamazana, and he has only uh, two points and one rebound so far. Well, only 12 minutes of action, which is surprising as you take a look at these stats overall. But 
you know, once again, Rutgers is in pretty good shape with this tempo of the game. I think they have to take some chances, pushing the basketball up the floor to try to get Pitt out of their style, which they are very, very good at. We'll be back with second half action from the University of Pittsburgh in a moment as the Panthers lead at the half 30 to 24. We're back and almost ready to go in the second half. In the first half, uh, Pittsburgh shot 47% from the field. Rutgers, 37.5%. But Lamazana, they've got to get him jump started, uh, Jim. As uh, Water says, uh, Irve can be as good as Irve wants to be. And against this tough defense, he's not produced so far. No, he hasn't. He's only gotten four shots also, of which he's made one. So for a total of two points, and you look at the leading scorers there, Taft with a very nice first half, four for eight, nine points. And Woot with five can add to Taft's line also three block shots. So he's been very, very impressive early on in the first half. At halftime today, they honored the great All-American wide receiver from the Pitt football team, Larry Fitzgerald, with presentation of the Walter Camp Award. Now Rutgers is uh, thrilled with the recruiting class they have coming in for football. And coach uh, Greg Schiano next season continues to build that program. Down low, a reject of Lamazana. So you remember he was the option early. He took uh, the first three times down. He took the shot. And then uh, Pittsburgh shut off uh, the possessions. Well, Brown defensively just then caught a shot to the face, maybe to the eye. He's guarding Lamazana right now and had been guarding him in the first half and did a remarkable job on him to slow him down, even though he's given up some size and height. Brown going for the steal, and he knocks out of bounds. So they're trying to work Lamazana, obviously, into the offense again and get him going. Lamazana, 14-and-a-half point per game score. Yeah, he's, got the, he's got the size on Brown. He should be down low rather than outside. Long ball by Lamazana. Comes down to Krauser, who tips it over to Brown. And here comes the quarterback, Harold Krauser from the Bronx, New York. Working it up court. Julius Page with that soft jumper, a high arcing jump shot for the senior. Plus the good elevation coming off the screen. And really gets a nice loft in the shot, but gets up in the air to shoot it over people. And Brown is guarding Lamazon, as I mentioned. They have to try to get him on the blocks and post up, get this ball down low, either to him or Hill, as much as they can. It's an important possession, Jim, for Rutgers as the Panthers have built their biggest lead of the game, eight points. Hill with a soft turnaround jump shot. Well, one that Rutgers needed, really. They want to make sure that they don't get let this get out of control early on right here. You hear coaches talk about the first five minutes of the game, the first five minutes of the second half. So important right here because Pitt, even though they're not explosive, are smart enough to knock you out of the box early. Three on one, they should get something out of this. Krauser starting the break. Uh, rejecting uh, the shot of Krauser was Hill. And now these going to have Rutgers going to the free throw line. Is heading to the line is Marquise Webb. Julius Page gets his first personal foul of the game. Pittsburgh 17-0 coming in. A win today. And uh, Amy Dixon would surpass the recent uh, win streak of Bill Guthridge of North Carolina. He started out 17-0, then lost to Maryland in 98. The all-time winning streak for a rookie coach is unbelievable. That was back in 78-79. Uh, Bill Hodges at Indiana State started out 33-0. First loss came in the national championship game when Larry Bird was bested by Magic Johnson at Michigan State. Not a bad guy to have on your team, Larry it's, Bird, huh? Pretty good year. That was the start of a <laughs> tremendous rival. But 33-0, the Sycamores of Indiana State started that season. Ended up 33-1. Brown going hard to the rack, and he gets it off glass. Boy, does Brown ever know how to use his body? 225 pounds of muscle and strength, not only at the offensive end, but he is putting the body to Lamazana right now, too, at the defensive end, not allowing Lamazana to use his 6'10 frame to get anywhere underneath. Ron Brown, a senior from Lexington, Kentucky, an experienced guy. He's 24 years old. I see he should be able to shoot right over him, yep, over the top. Now Lamazan in his frustration off the missed 10-foot jump shot comes over the back of Troutman and fouls him. Yeah, I think with Lamazan, I might mention to him, listen, catch the ball on the blocks, be patient, watch out for double teams coming at you, but just take your time and shoot over the 6-foot-4 ground down low. He is Luck Rutgers, a low-post presence, Irve Lamazana. 
And they need him to bring it every game. Cage from the outside. Rebound, Karam's off. Here comes Lamazana, 6-10, leading the break. Rutgers now playing volleyball, trying to keep it in play. <laughs> I was going to say, this one isn't by design, that break. Not a thing of beauty, but the Scarlet Knights keep possession. Al Krauser getting his uh, first personal foul. It's Krauser, he really holds it together. Of course, the, Panth the, the Pitt Panthers almost lost one game. That was at Miami when Krauser drove end-to-end -end in the closing seconds to send it to overtime with a driving shot, and they won. Well stroke ball as the freshman Marquise Webb from Patterson, New Jersey knocks it down. It makes a difference for Rutgers when they first look to the blocks to try to get the ball in low. When they do get it there, then the release pit releases defensively a little bit on the perimeter, and you're able to get a clearer shot off from long range. Rutgers uh, packing it in now, trying to keep these guys outside and deny that half who was so dominant early in the game. Five on the shot clock right now. Yep, going the other way. Jamie Dixon sees his team uh, with a failed possession. And the lead back down to four. Rutgers on a 4-0 run and with possession now. The Scarlet Knights keep hanging in. See, I think Jamie Dixon realizes, you know, he knows that Rutgers played well and beat Providence, played well against Connecticut. They're a team that if they get hot from the outside, albeit they're better at the rack than they are on the road, they can have some good things happen. Right now they have the big guy, Lamazano, cruising around out of the arc. 19 feet from the basket, here's Krauser with a beautiful drive. Reverses it to the left hand, lays it in, six point lead. All the Panthers. All triggered by another block shot by Taft down low. Here's Lamazana. Nowhere to go, Marquise Webb strokes a three, and it is now a 36-33 game pit. It was a simple play, too, in terms of what Lamazana did just then, too, Don. He didn't have anything. Don't force it. You're not playing real well. A lot of players make the mistake of trying to do too much. That was a good little delivery just then to the outside for Webb's jumper. And a very big three gets them right back in the game. Rutgers down by three, and here come the Panthers now. Krauser so smart with the ball. He is a very good decision maker. Wow. Down low. Taft can't get it to go. Gets his own rebound and is fouled. And it's a typical Pittsburgh play. Miss the shot, but get your own offensive board. You quickly come to learn that Taft has some great footwork. Look at him. The left foot, well, that's a walk, actually. No wonder why it was great pivot. He lifts the left foot up. Watch, the left foot was his initial pivot foot, and he, left, he lifts it off the floor. So he gets away with the travel just then. But his footwork is so good that sometimes you can, you can even fool the officials. 14.54 to play in the game as at the free throw line, Chris Taft, the 6'10 freshman, hits the free throw and builds the Panthers' lead to four. He has 10 points. The hot player for Rutgers is uh, Marquise Webb, the freshman. He has seven points, all coming here in the second half. That's a typical pit play. Missed the free throw, tip it out, but Rutgers is ready. Now Webb pulling up. Good Very confident guy, Jim, for a freshman. Sure is. Good decision. Shields going long range. That was a, that was not a four-pointer. That's a three-and-a-half-pointer. <laughs> Way outside the arc. And Rutgers is right back in it. For Shields, too, Don, that's like an extended layup, isn't it? He can, he can really go from long range. He can bomb. And he is a top defender also as he comes out. And Krauser rims out. Axani tips it over. He'll get it. And knocks it over, and here comes Shields and the Rutgers. Scarlet Knights looking to take the lead. Oh, he's thinking shot right there, too. Look at how far out the floor he is. Exani with a good play, as you touched on, too. Could not corral the basketball, but guided it over to his teammate. And Rutgers now, Jim, more patient with the ball. Lamazana with a beautiful move inside. There you go. When things are struggling a little bit from the floor, get the ball, take advantage of your size, get on the blocks. I would venture a guess that Gary Waters is going to try to post up Lamazana the next three or four minutes. Very, very important for this Rutgers team. He has to be well pleased as Rutgers has rallied back from down by eight in the second half to take the lead. What's kept Rutgers in this game and has ultimately propelled them to the lead after being down by eight in the second half is their three-point shooting. 
They are now uh, five of 11 shooting threes, and Pittsburgh has yet to hit from the arc. And you look at a situation, too, with Rutgers where, you know, the, when they see the ball go in from long range, they really can get riled up with it. You know, when they're at home in the rack, that's when the fans really get picked up and they start going crazy when they hit the long ball. So let's see if they can block out the Pitt fans here and continue to just play as they have been for the last four minutes or so. Rutgers with that ball pressure, that uh, tough man defense. Switching in and out of zones as they are changing looks on defense from time to time, but uh, their basic go is a pressure D man. 13.32 left to play in the game, and Rutgers continues to lead by one. We're back to Pittsburgh. Don Cricky with Jim Spinarco. Rutgers rallying back from eight points down in the second half to take the lead. Marquise Webb, the freshman, so assured and shooting from way outside the arc. Drops the hammer on a three. And he has uh, seven points, as you see, and it's hit both his shots. I mean, when you're hitting 100%, you've got to take some more. Exactly. He's doing a good job, though, and has been for Rutgers all season long and running the point. A tough job for a young player coming out of high school. Good-sized guard. Yep. Usually makes some pretty good decisions. He doesn't seem to get rattled too often. He's 6'5", Marquise Wet. High side pickup. Man. Fair. Oh. <laughs> Rutgers, I think, Jim, has found some uh, confidence in that arc. And who needs the arc? They're about three feet outside, and they build their biggest lead of the game, a four-point advantage. Rutgers on a 12-0 run. If you go behind the screens and try to double-team, but you're late getting around, the Shields will just flat-out let it rip. But we've seen him do it twice already. A little reach-in by Shields. Almost triggered that and pushed it ahead for a breakaway. This will make news if Rutgers can hold on, but there's a long way to go, and these Pitt Panthers are very schooled when the heat, when the game is on the line and winning it. And you win 36 in a row at home, 17 in a row to start the season, you're good at the only thing that counts, winning. Absolutely. This building, though, is known for its, no its noise, though. Yeah, it's been, been pretty quiet here in the last five or six minutes, hasn't it? I think these uh, long three-pointers by the Scarlet Knights have stunned the place. Really? Yeah, good job by Rutgers again. Defended pretty well. Page had a look. He's complaining. He thought he got hit on the arm. Well, Rutgers just has to continue to get into it. Now you're going to hear some noise. Fans trying to trigger the defense for their team right now by making some noise. And Pitchin has not scored a field goal in almost in four minutes now. Lamazana, beautiful look, but not enough on the shot. Hill is rejected. Lamazana gets it, and now the ball comes down to a pit player. Ron Brown, whose foot was on the baseline of the court. It will be Rutgers' ball after we take this timeout with the Scarlet Knights leading the Panthers 41-37. To the Peterson Event Center, and we had quite an event today as the uh, shooting of Ricky Shields has been a difference maker, and Rutgers has rallied from eight points down to take a four-point lead in the second half. If you don't come out and guard him, chest to chest, you're really going to have some problems. Webb's doing a good job of running this point, also steps away and knocks back one of his shots. They're shooting the basketball and shooting the rock pretty good. Shooting the rock is brought to you by Rolling Rock Beer. Grab a rock. Here's another shot and knocking it down. A smooth stroke by Hervé Lamazana, the big guy who was born on the Ivory Coast in Africa. Went to St. Patrick's in Elizabeth, New Jersey. And when he's at the top of his game, is a very formidable force inside. And he builds the Rutgers lead to six. This looks like it, almost like a triangling two right now. Yep, that's exactly what it is. You have two guards playing man to man. For Rutgers, you have Wigan playing man to man, and it looks like Webb playing man to man. And the other three players are just standing in a zone. So it's called a triangle two. The triangle being the three, gu three guys who are in the middle of the paint. Rutgers on a 14-0 run. It was up by eight. Now find themselves down by six. They've not scored a field goal of the Panthers in almost five minutes. Here's an open look from McCarroll. And he hits it. If, if you're smart with the basketball against a triangle two, Don, you bring it just like they did to one side of the floor, you will get open shots. So 
Let's see if Rutgers continues to go with this strategy. I don't think it's a bad idea by Gary Waters because he's at least switching up the defenses a little bit. And Waters did with some excellent adjustments at halftime, particularly in ball control. As Lamazana can't get it to go, but fighting for the ball is Adrian Hill, and he gets it for Rutgers. Rutgers turned it over ten times in the first half. They've not turned it over in the second half. The last set, too, when they took the out-of-bounds play and got Lamazana involved with the jump. It was great coaching by Gary Waters to get his big scorer involved with a comfort shot. You know, we, we talked, Jim, about the one-point loss to Connecticut, a game that Rutgers is a foul on Trouser hit in second. Uh, one-point loss to Connecticut by Rutgers, but that had to be a confidence builder when you know you can play the number one team right down to the wire and uh, almost beat them. Yeah, and, and there were times when, you know, that team, Rutgers and Gary Waters and company, looked very comfortable against UConn. I mean, just a little bit too much talent, as you touched on before. One through 12, Jim Calhoun has a great squad up in stores, but... You know, this is a dangerous Rutgers team because they don't go away. I mean, some nights, like we all have, they have flat nights and they don't play well just like any team in the United States. But their effort is generally pretty good. And usually in tight games like this, the free throw line is often a decider. Uh, both teams well under the limit. Rutgers and Camp, uh, Pittsburgh each with uh, three team fouls so far as Exani is cut. So the captain of the Scarlet Knights has to sit out until he stops the bleeding and cut his lip. Yeah, it's getting a little aggressive underneath. Seven, eight feet and shorter. You better be ready to go in there and fight. And here goes Lamazani. He's trying to post up Brown a little bit better on the blocks. And Brown continues to do a nice job on him. Lamazana, spin move. Bank shot doesn't go, but he draws a shooting foul. But at 6'10", he can move like a six-foot guard. You know, watch him with the ball here. He handles it very nicely, and now all of a sudden he goes into a spin. He loses his footing a little bit before the plant, but then gets a soft shot just a little bit too hard. That ball would have fallen for him. Foul is on Jerron Brown, only his uh, second of the game, the 14th foul against the Panthers. And Lamazana goes to the free throw line where he shoots 68%. They say, Jim, when he's at the top of his game, uh, he's got a Kevin Garnett look to his style of play. A big guy that can do it anywhere on the floor. Yeah, I mean, as you take a look at Exani taking care of his lip just then, that's why I think with Lamazana, they have to continually to focus a little bit more on the blocks with him. Two big misses, though, right there. Big misses. Yeah. That could have leaves the lead at four. Could have been a six-point Rutgers lead. Gives you a little more breathing room. And now we're inside 10 minutes to play. Our producer today for ESPN Plus is Bill Schistler, our director, Dennis Lanius, as we right now have uh, Pittsburgh trying to get it down after trailing. Down to maybe one if they hit the three. Rutgers back to the man-to-man -man straight up, it looks like. Yep. Oh. Ryan with a quick back and a foul, and he goes to the free throw line looking to cut the Rutgers lead to one. Did he ever use the body? And Jamie Dixon very happy with the play. The shot by Morris here a little short. But Brown using the strength initially to get the basketball and bounce Lamaz Lamazana away from him. And then the strength to finish it off and the quickness to put it up very nicely left the glass. Lamazana just was called with his uh, third personal foul of the game. Now, uh, Pittsburgh apparently back in form on offense after going five minutes without a field goal and falling behind by four after they led by eight in the second half. Oh. Aram's out. Hill gets the rebound. Pittsburgh always looking to slap at that ball if they can get to it because the opposition has inside lane position when you're shooting free throws. But they're so good at tipping out a missed free throw to one of their teammates. And the building starts to come alive. As Adrian Hill goes low and lays it in. Lamazana with the deal. Nice action, though, on the post by Hill to set himself up with the body before the delivery. A great job. He got Taft up the lane a little bit, and Taft was behind him. Not quick enough to get back to block that shot from behind. Here is Julius Page, the senior, getting the ball out to McCarroll. Right, Rutgers has some nice bounce in their legs collectively right now defensively. Axani with excellent defense. Tip doesn't work. 
Uh, that's, and it's knocked out of bounds, uh, last touched by Rutgers. That's good work by Exani right there, though. Defensively for the initial stay, and then coming back into that play to try to get his hands on the basketball. Good effort by him after that cut lift. Look at Iowa continues to lead number 25, Illinois. Duke up on the number three, Wake Forest. George up on Kentucky as we look at some ranked teams. Early in their games, here is Julius Pig with a beautiful looking stroke. Everyone's the same. Yep, a little breakdown by Rutgers defensively just then. You're allowing a lefty shooter to go deep into the left corner in his rhythm. Page obviously was thinking shot before the ball even came to him. And now Pittsburgh starts to rally, down by two. The Pitt Panthers with a, a national mark at the current time of 36 straight home victories. The all-time mark was something like 125 straight home wins. That was by Kentucky, I think, in the 40s. Wigan with a move to the basket. It's Joel Wigan from New York. New York puts on a street move and makes it go. Was well, he ever out there by himself with that ball for a long period of time? And then all of a sudden, that extra patience, bit of patience in the step through. A terrific move, one that they really needed. Wigan plays in that great uh, Harlem Rucker League in the summer. Well, you better bring your A yeah, game. They'll test you a little <laughs> bit over there. Byron Jones gets his uh, fourth personal foul for Rutgers now. So there's a timeout on the floor. Rutgers back up to a four-point lead, 47-43. We're back with 7.43 left to play in the game. Don Cricky with Jim Spinarkle, University of Pittsburgh. Rutgers down by four at the half as we look now at the... BMW ultimate drive of the game. And here is Carl Krauser going hard to the rack with a reverse. But in the second half, the uh, Scarlet Knights have clearly outplayed Pitt so far and hold to a four-point lead over a team that is undefeated this season under rookie coach Jamie Dixon. Uh, there is just plenty of time to go in this basketball game. Jerron Brown launches a three. And it is a one-point game as the Panthers rally back. You would anticipate the fans to really get into this set right now and help their team defensively as much as possible. And Jerron Brown, a 12-point-a-game scorer, currently leads all scores in the game. He scored 14 today for Pitt. Stripped from Lamazan of the ball, but it's taken back by Wick, and he puts it up. Doesn't go. A rebound taken down by Jerron Brown. Gary Waters was extolling Brown's all-around game. He said he's a guy you have to watch every minute at both ends. We're coming to you from the uh, Peterson Event Center. Don Cricky with Jim Spinarco. Big East basketball on ESPN+. And now there's a timeout on the floor with 6.56 left to play. A game that has gone back and forth. Jamie Dixon's team holding to a four-point lead at halftime. And then Rutgers railing back with a 14-0 run to take a six-point lead. Let's take a look now at the Advance Auto Parts upcoming schedules. Rutgers uh, heading to Miami, playing St. John's at Villanova, home to play Notre Dame on Saturday the 31st. And then Advance Miami and uh, Pittsburgh will really get a test Monday night at number one Connecticut, then at number 19 Syracuse. Pittsburgh, as you know, Jim has to play Connecticut and Syracuse twice each this season. Home and away, you really find out how good you are. Absolutely. You know, they hopefully are not thinking about Connecticut or Syracuse right this minute because they have their hands full right here with Rutgers. But the Panthers with a chance to take the lead. Good timeout by Jamie Dixon just then to make sure they get a good look. Hey, the work in there, huh? And Lamazana <laughs> takes the rebound down. Minute work under there. Yeah, they're ready to roll. Here we go. It's time to buckle up. Six and a half minutes left. Rutgers looking for what could be one of the great upsets in the history of Rutgers basketball if they can pull this off. But as you mentioned, a long way to go. Lamazana down low. He's being body checked. Up. Too much on it. Rebound comes down to Taft. You notice how he did not turn to the basket. He kind of shot that from the side. Look at Krauser. Where is everybody? Rebound knocked around. Taft puts it back up and down. Wait a minute. Wait. Boy, he hung on to that a long time, yeah, didn't he? It looked like the ball might be in the cylinder, but the official right there said no, it was clean. 
And uh, Pittsburgh has rallied back and taken the lead. And this building has erupted. A huge possession now for the Scarlet Knights. And make sure they get a good look. Don't be surprised to see a timeout if they don't get anything going towards the basket. Rebound knocked around, taken on the baseline as Julius Page, the senior leader, the 6'3 guard, gets it over to his point guard, Carl Krauser. Krauser with a great ability to move and change uh, speeds on the dribble and just drive right through. Foul call on Joel Wigan, his third. Six team fouls on Rutgers, four team fouls on Pitt. So on the next foul against Rutgers, uh, Pittsburgh will be shooting the bonus. One in bonus. Marquise Webb leaves the game, a guy who had the hot hand in the second half, scoring uh, seven points early on in the second half. They help Rutgers take the lead. Comes Page again into the right corner. Better defense there by Wiggins. Good understanding of what they were trying to do with Page. Game clock down to 5-12 to play. Browser very sure with the dribble and always looking to set somebody up. Brown. Plenty of holding here. I don't know who it's going to go on. It's like right here. Pitt. I'm going to call it on Rutgers. John Lamazana. He's got a problem. That's four. So Hervé with four personal fouls. you got to keep him in the game with the game on the line. A one-point game pick. Because you don't have to keep him in. No, they're taking Axani out there. I'm leaving him in. Yeah, I'm not sure about that yet. They're going to switch that, Don. Yeah, yeah. No, he's coming out. Not yeah. quite the stretch run yet. No, you give him, you try it, you know, it depends on the next possession or two, though. If you go down three, five points, regardless of the time, then you put him back in the game. But you hope that you can weather this storm, you know, for another minute, minute and a half. If you can get to about the three and a half minute with Lamazana coming back in, that's what I would shoot for. And shooting uh, for one at the line, and now a second is Chris Taft, the freshman, who they think could evolve into one of the best players in pit basketball history. He is. is this Troutman moving him out? It is. Uh, Troutman, who's very good at that. Siobhan Troutman body checking, but they call him on it there. It does such a terrific job of tipping out their own missed free throws to a teammate. You know when you can tell, Don, that the, the rebounding is getting a little tougher is when they're on free throws. They're pushing one another around. Generally, yeah. during the course of the game, when a shot goes up, guys are banging and bumping all the time. But when you have that kind of hitting on just free throw attempts, you know it's getting tough underneath. And Rutgers has now gone uh, three and a half minutes without a field goal. Good call out front. Krauser with the hold. I think Doobie has to do a little bit more of that. He's got the speed. All of a sudden now, hits up to the sixth foul. So one more drive, and we're even at the fouls. Krauser just got his third personal foul. Yeah, we have 16 fouls now. They've, they've signaled Rutgers up there with seven now on the board. The last call was against Krauser. Uh, the free throw shooting less than stellar. Pittsburgh 5 of 9 from the line. Rutgers 4 of 9. Here is uh, Shields as they hawk the ball. He gets it over and Doobie puts it up and knocks it down. Quincy Doobie. <laughs> you gotta love that effort though. Both teams, the ball on the floor. Both teams going after it. Somehow it squeezes out for Rutgers. Charlotte Knights tie the game at 49 as Doobie, the former New York City public school scoring leader for a season, averaging over 25 a game at Grady High in Brooklyn. This is the fourth tie of the game. Turnaround. Offensive rebound put back. Pittsburgh continues to work well at the offensive end with follow-ups. Oh, boy, they have a great player in Taft. He's, he, does, he is good as a youngster right now. I, can imagine what we have two or three years down the road as a player if he develops and continues to work at it. And now we're going to have a, uh, is this a turnover call on Rutgers? As we have a timeout called on the floor. As down the floor comes a Carl Krauser. Yeah, good back. 
And it is time now for the Cooper Tire Defensive Player of the Game, Jim Spinarco. Well, you have a situation where, you know, a lot of guys stepping up, but here comes Taft really playing the solid defense at different portions of this game. In the first half, he had three blocks. He's always around really the glue defensively. Second step in, but he's quick with his footwork. He's got very good timing. And you take a look at those numbers, 11 rebounds and five blocks. Really stepping it up from the defensive standpoint with those blocks, especially against, you know, not against La Mazzana offensively, but La Mazzana very, very good, number 10 in the country in block shots. So great effort by Taft. Yeah, La Mazzana came in with 43 blocks for the season. Rutgers has turned the ball over once in the second half after 10 first half turnovers, and now Rutgers challenges Trouser for the ball, and they're going to rule it over and back on Pittsburgh. And the ball comes back over to the Scarlet Knights. The State University of New Jersey looking to take the lead or tie here. Rutgers comes back. Good job by Gary Waters with the triangling defense. You know what? That may have been deflected over by Wigan, I believe it was. Right, Rutgers controls the basketball with just a touch over three minutes to go. And Pitt continues to do that great job. Courtney up and they steal it right back. Lead goes down to Jerron Brown. Driving. Lujet. Now Paul. Are they going to score the basket on an interference? And I think both of those are the correct calls if they give it to him. Yep. They're going to give it to him. Yeah. Could be a three-point play for Pitt. Good smart pass here by Troutman, though, getting it up the floor. Now watch the strain the Brown take over. He hangs in the air. It's the right call from the officials on both counts. Good pick up down the floor. Not a team that runs it up a whole lot. Gets to the backboard and he takes it off the glass. So the Panthers now hold to a 53-49 uh, to 49 lead. They have a four-point lead, not the two-point lead you see. And they are going to go to the free throw line. Pittsburgh uh, went on a uh, real scoring drought. Five minutes without a field goal. Well, he scored the, the goal. The official came over and told the, the scores table that's good. They, yeah, maybe they're just thinking who was the who was the fouler. I think it was it was definitely Doobie. Just wanted to get that correct, and they did. It was on uh, it was on Doobie on the break. He reached in and grabbed Brown. It was not on Exani. They got Exani for goaltending. So Pittsburgh with a four-point lead, looking to extend at two-five. Jaron Brown at the free throw line. He's only 50% from the free throw oh, line. Look at the offensive <laughs> rebound. They're going to get Troutman on a push off. I don't know. No, they're not. I, I don't mean, know about get, that. How do you get position inside? Either you're the uh, world's fastest man or you use some body check, but at any rate, they're going to call it on Exani, and it's his second. Well, what Troutman does very well in the free throws, a lot of guys just wait there and, and don't anticipate going after the basketball. One thing he does is he gives me the impression like he's thinking before the shot goes, I want to be fast, I want to be furious and go after it. And being 6'7", about 235, not afraid to tangle with people inside. Well, he really made the difference in the uh, three-point win over Notre Dame Monday night, Troutman, with uh, offensive rebounds off of missed Pittsburgh free throws. It was unbelievable how he kept getting them. Yeah. Puts the first one in and big shot right here. Pittsburgh with the longest winning streak in the country, 17 straight wins, 36 straight wins at home. And now Rutgers down by five with 2.45 to play. Rutgers has to continue to go drive the ball towards the basket. I know Taft is in there and he's blocked some shots this afternoon, but you have to start challenging and going towards the basket. Long ball, rims out, Bowser rebound. And the Panthers will look to run clock, you would think. But if Krauser sees an open, this guy is really smart with the ball. See, and at the Rutgers end just then, Don, that gets it done if you bury a long shot. I know it's the home run ball, and it puts you up. It gets you back into it mentally and all. But percentage-wise, you really have to go to the basket, stop the clock. Pitt has six fouls up on the board, and try to get to the line and stop this clock. And they're just taking tons of time off the clock now as it nears five seconds. Shot clock down to three, long range hit. That's you. Maybe time to think, talk things over a little bit. Here comes the timeout. 19 points for Jerron Brown and the Pitt Panthers. After falling behind by six in the second half, 
have rallied to take an eight-point lead. Now, see where they're very, very good as you take a look at some of these scores. Illinois holding on right there. Duke up on uh, Wake Forest, a uh, battle of two top five teams yeah. in the ACC. Kentucky having some problems huh, against Georgia. Oklahoma, they can tell you how good uh, UConn yeah, is. Yeah, they sure can. Huh? <laughs> they went in there and got blown away. Yeah, this is a, a solid pit basketball team. Ranked number 13. Take a look, not bad for a rookie, huh? He's down at the bottom there, but he's going to jump up to the jump up a spot over Bill Guthridge from UNC. What a start, and it certainly what a validation of the decision to bring him in as the head coach here at the Peterson Athletic Center, where the Pitt Panthers have known only victory. They stand 30 and 0 since the building opened. And I know you're down eight right now for your Rutgers, but you have to try to get to the basket, try to attack and stop this clock. There you go, get it down low. See, that's effective. Yeah, that's, good. that's effective right there. They heard you, Jim, as they uh, do get the foul inside, stopping the clock with 1.42 left to play. And to the free throw line goes Hervé Lamazani. You recall he bricked a couple his last trip to the line. He is for the season a 68% free throw shooter coming in. And Killen with the line, missing the front end. You know, Pitt's not that good a free throw shooting team, Don, at 62% as Rutgers comes up. They may want to try fouling earlier than normal. Down low, here is Taft with a hook move to the basket. Shot doesn't go, but he was fouled and will go to the free throw line to shoot two shots. So he's a 60% shooter, 59% to be exact. So not a bad strategy if you're Rutgers right now. I mean, you're running out of time, you're down a bunch. And that's the end of the line, Jim, for Lamazana. He fouled out. Really got to give Jerron Brown some credit this afternoon. He really was tangling pretty nicely with Lamazana. So Irve Lamazana, the main man in the Rutgers rotation, the guy who's the first option when they have the ball, finishes with six points, eight and a half below his average, four rebounds, three assists. And at the line, Taft strokes the free throw. He now has 16 points. Well above his uh, per game average. Taft averages 10 points a game. Shields comes out. And now Rutgers uh, down by nine, and it could be 10 in a moment after this next stroke. By the big guy, and Taft builds into a 10-point lead. Uh, Bring it down in a hurry and try to get to the basket if you can. And the freshman ties his career high for Pittsburgh with 17 points. Rutgers has to launch. Pitt will yeah. not allow it. Defending the arc. Yeah, they're not even getting any possibilities. Down low attempt as they try to get a wax on. Here's a long ball. Here is Taft. Loses the handle, but gets it back. Coming our way. Goes right to John Conamites, sitting next to us. A distinguished Pitt alum. He's got the best <laughs> seats in the house. You're mingling with the crowd again, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, it was a tremendous effort by Rutgers, but you can see what Pitt is all about. They were challenged, lost the lead, was on the line, and then Pitt showed everybody why they're one of the best teams in America and a team with the longest winning streak. Rutgers has only one basket since the 7.58 mark. So in seven minutes, they have one basket. Taft puts it up. Rebound comes down to Rutgers. Here's Doobie, the freshman. He takes it all the way down. He's rejected the tap, which could be showtime as uh, Krauser now. And then on the advice of his coach, holds up. So for Rutgers, a tremendous effort. And for Pittsburgh, an illustration of why they are unbeaten. When it was on the line, the Pitt Panthers rallied and played their very best basketball. And Rutgers will go the final four minutes and seven seconds today with no points. As Coach uh, Jamie Dixon says to his defense, thank you so very much. Okay. That is about defense and team play, and this is really a terrific basketball team. 18-0 and counting as the beat goes on.
Well, Pittsburgh rallies from behind to win by 10, 59-49, holding yet another opponent to under 50 points. This is Don Cricky with Jim Spinarco back at the University of Pittsburgh where uh, Jamie Dixon moves past now Bill Guthridge, who uh, won 17 straight as a rookie coach for North Carolina back in 97-98. As Jamie Dixon goes to 18-0 as a head coach at Pittsburgh, we'll see if he can catch Bill Hodges. Right now, let's go to Jim Spinarco. Thanks, Don. Jamie, obviously, congratulations. 18-0 right now. Rutgers came in. They played well against Connecticut this year. Beat the Friars recently. Gave you a good uh, run this afternoon, but you have to be happy with the way your team responded down the stretch. Well, we expected a great effort from Rutgers. They made tough shots. Uh, they, they take tough shots, and they made them, and, and uh, we did a great job sucking it up in the end. And what can you say about Jerome Brown? The guy worked so hard, and uh, he just made every play at the end, and uh, he's just a great kid. What has been your trick here so far? What, what would you put your stamp of, uh, of approval on, if you would, in terms of why your team is winning as often as they have been? Uh, we got good players. I mean, they got they got winners and they're they're competitors and they they love to compete and they're unselfish and they're smart. That's about, those are two things I think people will forget: is they're very smart players and they're unselfish and they uh, they'll do all it takes to win. Thanks for your, thanks for your time. Congratulations. I know you have Connecticut and Syracuse. Good luck to you, Don. Let's throw it back to you. All right, Jim. And there it is as we look at the home winning streak of Pittsburgh now to uh, current NCAA Division One best 37 straight wins. And they can shoot for Kentucky's win streak in the 40s when they won 125 straight wins at home. But it was a very impressive Pittsburgh win. And I think what uh, Coach Dixon said about his team playing smart and unself, it sums it all up. As right now, we're going to go back to Jim with a guy who played a, just a fabulous game for Pittsburgh. Thanks, Don. I'm here with Jerron Brown. And Jerron, obviously a tough game coming down the stretch. How much pressure do you put on yourself to take over your basketball team and lead your team in tough situations? I try not to put much pressure on myself at all. I just play and let the game come to me, and that's just what I did today. I'm trying not to rush anything. How much time do you guys spend uh, in practice during the course of a week in your defensive effort? Because, Coach, you really clamp down on some bodies. Every day. This is what I practice the best, mainly defense. It's hard. No but to score it in practice because we're just playing so hard at defense. Give me a quick comment or two, if you would. I know with, from a Pittsburgh perspective, you get through Rutgers today. You turn the page and you have Connecticut and Syracuse looking at you and they have ats on that schedule. So you're going to play at Connecticut and at Syracuse. Your thoughts on those two games or at least on Connecticut up first? Right now we can ready to get focused on Connecticut. Like everybody was asking us about Connecticut. We had this game first. We just take it one game at a time. Once we get through with Connecticut, we'll uh, focus on Syracuse. What, what do you think it takes for you to go up there to Connecticut and get a win up there? Uh, they got a good team and a good crowd. I think we just have to play the way we've been playing, patient, and just execute our plays and play good defense. Well, congratulations, and thanks for spending some time with us. Good luck the rest right, of the Don, way. Okay, Don, I'm going to throw it back to you. All right, Jim, and that is it. The uh, final score, Pittsburgh uh, beating Rutgers 59-49. As they got a complete team effort, it was a game effort by the Pitt Panthers, who were down by four, or up by four at the half, then Rutgers rallied to take the second half lead, and then Pittsburgh came roaring back. Uh, Taft, the freshman, with uh, 17 points today. Brown with 19, so they did all the things they had to do. It was a day, though, when Gary Waters saw his team grow. They came into this building where nobody wins, and certainly not in the recent years, and uh, they gave Pitt everything they could handle till the stretch run by the Panthers put it away. And so Pittsburgh now gets set to go to number one Connecticut on Monday night. The moment of truth for the unbeaten Pitt Panthers. Now for Jim Spinarco, this is Don Cricky. This has been a presentation of ESPN+. Plus the worldwide leader in collegiate sports television. Thanks for being with us. Can you hear?